so we're back. Uh, this is today's episode of Quarantine Theater. So I'm glad you joined us. Uh, we're going to do a classic, uh, a classic of theater of the absurd. We're doing a scene from The Lesson by Eugene Inesco. So hope you can make sense out of it. We're not sure if we are. We're just you know, Linda's like going over lines, I just went over mine. It's, it's a crazy thing. So, you got a pencil right here. Here's a pencil. Uh, so, uh, uh, as you all know, if you've been with us before, this is just some light readers theater we do once a week to keep the ball bouncing in these strange times and hope, hopefully it'll make your life a little happier. This will be posted on my Facebook page right afterwards and uh, as it will be on Linda's, and we'll upload it to our Quarantine Theater YouTube channel after that, so you have lots of possibilities for seeing it. So um, this is uh, an extraordinary play. Uh, theater of the Absurd was a movement that began in the 1950s as a reaction to, well, perhaps a little before, it. it's because it's absurd, it's tough to say, it started exactly on this date. But the world was seeming to become more and more absurd with the atomic bomb and the horrible destruction of the Holocaust. And so various playwrights were writing plays which seemed to question reality as we know it. So, Linda, should we take a shot at this? Um, I'll help you with it. I'm not sure. Yeah, you go to here. And I, that's my but line. from where? From here. Here. From here. You, well, we'll go through it. There's no such thing as wrong. And I pick it up here. Fuck! Okay. All right, so here we go. Have a seat. Are we starting? We're going to start right um, there. Good morning. So, I'm playing the professor and she's playing the pupil in... And Ooh. she's very young. Yes. She's 16, 16 maybe. maybe. Uh, and uh, this is by Eugene Inesco. Here we go. All right. Good morning, young lady. You, I, I expect that you, uh, well, I expect that you're the new pupil. Yes, good morning, Professor. As you see, I'm on time. <laughs> I didn't want to be late. Oh, that's fine, Miss. <laughs> Thank you. You really didn't need to hurry. I'm very sorry to have kept you waiting. I was just finishing up, um, 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 um. well, uh, I'm sorry. And you'll excuse me, won't you? Oh, certainly, Professor. It doesn't matter at all, Professor. <laughs> oh, please, excuse me. Uh, did you have any trouble finding the house? No, no, not at all. I just asked the way. Everybody knows you around here. Ah, <laughs> for 30 years I've lived in this town. You've not been here a long time. How did you find it? It's all right. The town is attractive and even agreeable. There's a nice park, a boarding school, a bishop, nice shops and streets. Oh, that, that's all very true, young lady. And yet, I'd just as soon live somewhere else. In Paris or, or at least Bordeaux. <gasps> Should I Bordeaux? I don't know. I've never been there. Oh, but you know Paris. No, 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 I haven't been there either, young lady. But, if you'll permit me, Paris is the capital city of? Paris is the capital city of France. Yes! <laughs> oh, young lady, bravo, that's very good, that's perfect. My congratulations, you have your French geography at your fingertips. <laughs> You know your chief cities. Oh, I don't know them all yet, Professor. It's not quite that easy. I have trouble learning. Oh, it will come. Oh. You mustn't give up, young lady. I beg your pardon. Have patience little by little. You will see. It will come in time. <sighs> what a nice day today. <laughs> well, I remember it was not so nice. Oh, but then, yes, it is nice. Well, in short, it's not a bad day. And that's the main thing. <clears throat> it's not raining. And it's not snowing either. So that would be most unusual for it's summer now. Oh, excuse me, miss. I, I, I was just going to say so. 
But as you will learn, one must be ready for anything. Oh, I guess so, Professor. We can't be sure of anything, young lady, in this world. The snow falls in the winter. Winter is one of the four seasons. Mm. The other three are... Uh, sp uh, yes. The other three are... And then summer. And then summer. Um, and then... Sounds like automobile, miss? Uh, this is... Uh, autumn! Yes! <laughs> That's right, miss! That's a good answer! That's... Perfect. I'm convinced that you will be a good pupil. You will make you make real progress. You are intelligent. Ah, uh, you seem to be well informed. Uh, you have a very good memory. I know my seasons. Yes. Don't look, yes, indeed. Yes. <laughs> or almost. <laughs> but oh. it will come in time. Uh, in any case, uh, you're coming along, and soon you'll know of all the seasons, even with your eyes closed. Indeed, oh. just as I do. Oh. Well, it's hard. Yes, I know. It all just takes a little effort, a little goodwill, miss, and you will see. It will come. You may be sure of that. <clears throat> oh, I do hope so, Professor. So. I have a great thirst for knowledge. So. <laughs> yeah. Turn the page. Uh, good. Let us arithmetize a little now. Oh. <laughs> yes, gladly, yes, Professor. Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, would it be too tiresome for you to tell me, um... Oh, uh, no, not at all, Professor. How much are one and one? How much are one and one? One and one make two. That's good. That's very good. <laughs> you appear to me to be well along in your studies. You should easily achieve, achieve a doctorate <laughs> easily, Miss. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> well, I'm glad especially to have someone like you to tell me this. Let's push on. How much are two and one? Uh... Three and one? Four. Four and one? Five. Five and one? Six. Six and one? Seven. Seven and one? Eight. Uh, seven and one. Um, seven and one? Seven and one. Seven eight again. Very well answered. Uh, um, seven and one? Eight again. And sometimes nine? Yes. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> ah, magnificent. You are magnificent. You are exquisite. I congratulate you warmly, miss. There's scarcely any point in going on. Addition, you are the past master of it. Now, let's look at subtraction. Now, tell me, uh, if you're not too exhausted, how many are four minus three? Four minus three? Yes. Four minus three. Yes, yeah. I, I mean to say, subtract three from four. That makes seven. <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, I'm obliged to contradict you. Now, four minus three does not make seven. You are confused. Uh, four plus three makes seven. Four minus three does not make seven. <clears throat> this is not addition anymore. You uh, must subtract uh, now. Yes. Now, so yes. Four minus three makes how many? Four. How many? Uh, no, 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 that's not it. Three, then. No, that's not it either. Uh, pardon me. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I ought to say, no, that, that's, that's not it. Excuse me. Uh, four minus three, four minus three, four minus three. Mm -hmm. But now, doesn't that make ten? No, certainly not, miss. Now, now it's not a matter of guessing. You've got to think it out. Now, let's try to deduce it together. <clears throat> Would you like to count? Yes, Professor. One, two, uh, uh... You know how to count. Uh, how far can you count up to? I can count to infinity! That's not possible, miss. Well, then, let's say to 16. That's enough. <laughs> now, one must know one's limits. So, count then, if you will, please. Uh, one, two, and after two comes three, <laughs> then four... Stop! Stop there. Now, which number is bigger? Three or four? Excuse me, Professor, what do you mean by the larger number? Uh, is it the one that is not so small as the other? That's it! Perfect! <laughs> now you've understood me very well. <laughs> then it is four! <laughs> what is four? Larger or smaller? Than smaller! It? No! Larger! Excellent answer! <laughs> How many units are there between three and four? Between four and three, if you prefer. Uh, if there aren't any units, Professor, between three and four, uh, four comes immediately after three. There is nothing at all between 
I have a name myself. Well understood. No, no doubt. It's my fault. <gasps> now, I have not been sufficiently no, clear. No, yes, it's my fault. Look here. <clears throat> there are three matches, and here is another one that makes four. Now, watch carefully. We have four matches. I take one away. And how many do we have left? Five. If three will make four, and four will make five. That's not it. That's not is it? Oh, you always have a tendency to add, but one must be able to subtract two. It's not enough to integrate, you also have to disintegrate. That's the way in life, that's the way philosophy is, that's a science, that's progress, that's civilization. Yes, Professor. Let's return to our matches. <clears throat> I have four of them, you see? I have really four. I take one away and I remain only. I don't know, Professor. Come on, think. It's not easy, I admit. Nevertheless, you have had enough training to make the intellectual effort required to arrive at an understanding, so... I can't get it, Professor. I don't know, Professor. <sighs> Let's take a simpler example. <clears throat> um, if you had uh, two noses and I pulled one of them off, how many we have left? None. What do you mean, none? Well, yes, it's because uh, you haven't pulled off any, that's why I have one now. If you had pulled it off, I wouldn't have it anymore. You have not understood my example. <clears throat> Suppose that you have only one ear. Yes, and then... And then if I gave you another one, how many would you have then? Two. Good. <laughs> and if I gave you another one, how many would you have then? Three ears. Ah, <laughs> take one away, uh, there remain how many ears? Two! Ah, good! And if I take still another one, how many do you have left? Two! Ah, no! No, you have two, I take one away. I eat one up. And how many do you have left? Two. I eat one of them. One. Two. 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 No, 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 no. That's not right. The example is not convincing. Now, I know that this is not easy. It's all very, very abstract, obviously, but unless you can comprehend the primary elements, how do you expect to be able to calculate mentally? And, and this is the least of the things that even an ordinary engineer must be able to do. How much, for example, are 3,755,998,251 multiplied by 5,262,303,508? That makes 19 quintillion, 390 quadrillion, 2 trillion, 844 billion, 219 million, and 164,508. No, I don't think so. Now that's an absurd scene. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, so thanks for joining us. Uh, <laughs> if you had a good time, yeah, you can share this, you can tell others about it, uh, or you can just come back and visit us next week. So I'm going to go around and turn the camera off. Okay. And you have to continue to keep charming as oh, I'm doing okay. that. Um, I'll fix my hair.